We present a case of lower GI bleeding from a rectal de la foie lesion that was managed with a transanal minimally invasive surgical approach as an alternative to proctocolectomy. We have no relevant disclosures. De la foie lesions are rare, histologically normal, but abnormally large arteries that erode through the mucosa of the GI tract, causing bleeding. The majority of de la foie lesions are found in the stomach. However, extra gastric lesions has been reported including reports of rectal de la foie. We present the case of a 51 years old male patient who has extensive medical and surgical history, including previous type A aortic dissection repair with aortic valve replacement and coronary artery bypass, which was complicated by sternal infection and mediastinitis requiring sternectomy and flap reconstruction. He also underwent previous anterior resection for diverticulitis and previous incisional hernia repair with mesh which was complicated by mesh infection requiring mesh extraction and small bowel resection. The patient underwent staging procedure, starting with an axillary femoral bypass followed by a hybrid repair of a thoracoabdominal aortic aneurysm through a retroperitoneal approach. The procedure was complicated by bleeding from the spleen requiring reoperation and a splenectomy, followed by temporary abdominal closure for several days prior to definitive closure of the abdomen. Postoperative course was complicated by multiple admissions to the intensive care unit, recurrent pneumonia, and chronic infection of the aortic graft. During his admission, the patient developed lower gastrointestinal bleeding with hemodynamic instability, requiring ionotropic support and massive transfusion of approximately 35 units of packed red blood cells. A CT scan of the abdomen showed evidence of contrast exervization and pooling in the mid to lower rectum, indicating active bleeding. Given the location of the bleeding, endoscopic management was attempted in the ICU and revealed bleeding from a discrete artery in the lower rectum with normal surrounding mucosa, consistent with a de la foie lesion. Bleeding was controlled with epinephrine injection and placement of three endoscopic clips. The patient's clinical condition improved with cessation of bleeding. However, seven days later, the patient had recurrent lower GI bleeding, causing hemodynamic instability and massive transfusion requirements. A repeat CT scan showed evidence of bleeding in the same location, likely from an anterior branch of the right internal iliac artery. Attempted angioembolization failed to identify the source of bleeding, and the non-selective embolization of the right internal iliac was performed. The bleeding initially improved after the embolization, however, it recurred within the next few hours. Given the failure of endoscopic and angiographic bleeding control, the colorectal surgery service was consulted and definitive operative management was planned. Given the location of the bleeding, a proctectomy would be necessary. However, due to the discrete nature of the lesion and the anticipated difficulty and morbidity associated with an abdominal approach, transanal minimally invasive surgical approach was attempted. In the meantime, sigmoidoscopy was performed to attempt temporary control and mark the site of the bleeding for subsequent surgical intervention. The patient was placed in the lithotomy position, and a gel point path transanal access platform was placed in the rectum, and the rectum was insufflated with CO2. The endoscopic clips were used to confirm the location of the de la foie lesion. The rectal mucosa was grasped and incised using electrosurgery. An energy device was then used to perform a full thickness rectal resection of the area until the perirectal path was reached. After securing hemostasis, the rectum was closed in a running fashion using a V-lock suture.
a second layer of closure was performed and hemostasis was secured. The total length of the procedure was 27 minutes, and there was no further bleeding or complications of the procedures postoperatively. Transanal, minimally invasive surgical approach can be an effective modality to control bleeding from rectal lesions, and is potentially associated with less morbidity than formal proctectomy in selected indications and group of patients. In the case of a Delafoy lesion, a full thickness rectal excision may be necessary to ensure effective bleeding control.